Sphere, 1987, a science fiction novel by best-selling author Michael Crichton, tells the story of a group of scientists, led by psychologist Norman Johnson, as they explore the ruins of a spacecraft discovered at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Though the novel falls firmly within the science fiction genre, it contains, like many of Crichton's novels, a number of different plot elements, ranging from psychological thriller to philosophical inquiry. As the novel opens, Johnson is traveling to DH-8, a deep-sea habitat on the floor of the Pacific where a massive spacecraft has been found. Accompanying him are mathematician Harry Adams, astrophysicist Ted Fielding, zoologist Beth Halpern, and marine biologist Arthur Levine, also in attendance are several United States Navy personnel. Levine becomes claustrophobic on the descent and returns to the surface. When the rest of the group arrives at DH-8, they undergo a process of pressurization so they can withstand the strange gases in the habitat's environment. A robot goes into the ruined spacecraft first, whereupon it opens a panel near the door. The robot's camera gives the scientists a view of whatever it encounters. They can read a label on the opened panel stating that the craft is an American-made one, manufactured 350 years in the future and sent backward in time. After the robot encounters issues with going more deeply into the aircraft, the team of scientists suit up and enter the vessel. In a cargo hold area, they come upon a spherical object that appears to be not of this world. Adams posits that the craft's builders, centuries in the future, did not foresee this discovery of their spacecraft, so that must mean he and the others will not survive the return trip to the surface. After the others return to the habitat, Adams stays behind and enters the sphere. As he does, a cyclone rages on the surface, forcing the Navy ships to evacuate and trapping the team of scientists down in DH-8. The other scientists retrieve Adams, he returns to the habitat, but strangely, he has virtually no memory of how he accessed the sphere or what happened once he got into it. Just as he has this realization, a friendly extraterrestrial being called Jerry establishes contact with the team, communicating via a numeric code sent through one of the computers in DH-8. The team deciphers the various codes they receive, and even stranger things start to occur around them, including the presence of bizarre and terrifying sea life that Halpern says cannot possibly exist. Then, Jerry confesses that he is the one creating these unusual creatures. That's when the team understands that Jerry is not the friendly, we come in peace being he originally seemed to be. When a giant squid kills Fielding, the team realizes what they are up against. Johnson retranslates some of Jerry's original messages and sees that Jerry's name is not Jerry, but Harry, as in Harry Adams, the first person to enter the sphere. Johnson suggests that the sphere takes an individual's subconscious thoughts and makes them real. The giant squid attacking the habitat is the product of Adams's subconscious fears, which were manifested by the sphere. As the group waits to make contact with the surface, they sedate Adams. The manifestations of his fears, however, continue. Then, Halpern levels an accusation at Johnson. She thinks he has entered the sphere and gained its powers for himself. Later, Johnson sees a security video and, captured on tape, he sees that it was actually Halpern who entered the sphere and absorbed some of its power. When he confronts her, she denies it, deciding that Johnson is dangerous. She places explosives around the habitat and tries to suffocate Johnson. Johnson escapes and flees to the spacecraft, where he enters the sphere. Once inside, he comes face to face with a large, luminous, foam-like mass. Inside his head, he seems to be having a conversation with this mass, which harbors a being who speaks in riddles. The being explains to Johnson that the human race's ability to imagine is their greatest power. Johnson exits the sphere, and though tempted to use a nearby submarine to escape DH-8, he knows he can't leave the surviving team members behind. He retrieves Adams and Halpern, and the three of them escape in the submarine before the explosives set by Halpern detonate. The group reaches the surface, where they are put in a decompression chamber. They discuss what to tell the Navy about their experiences with the sphere. They each recognize that the sphere has given them significant knowledge and insight but it's simply too much for the rest of the world to understand and would even be dangerous to reveal. So, as a sacrifice to preserve human life as we know it, the group agrees to use the power the sphere has given them to remove all memory of it from their minds. In the place of those memories, they create a story about a routine technical issue that kept them stranded on DH-8. 
However, in his final words to Halpern, Johnson hints that maybe, just maybe, he did not entirely remove all of the power he gained from the Sphere. Sphere was a New York Times bestseller. It was made into a major motion picture in 1998. Directed by Barry Levinson, the movie starred Dustin Hoffman, Sharon Stone, Samuel L. Jackson, Liev Schreiber, and Peter Coyote. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.